Hello and welcome to the 23rd lesson of this Excel course. I am Sumit Bansal and in this video we will learn how we can create dynamic charts in Excel. Let's get started by looking at the first example. Here I have the data for ABC Technology Corporation Limited. This is the dummy data that I've created for this purpose of this video. I have these years 2007 to 14 and I have the numbers for revenue, operating cost, EBITDA and net profit. Now I'll show you how to create this dynamic chart where user has the flexibility to select the year. In this case it is showing four years at a time and the user can use the slider to change the year and you can see that as I change the slider the year here changes. As of now it is 2009 but when I change the slider it becomes 2010 and 11 and so on. Also uh, the chart title changes accordingly so here it would show me the data for 2010 to 14 and when I change the slider the change happens. Now let me create another tab. I would show you how to create this from scratch. Let me paste this data here and I would also copy the width. Now to create this dynamic chart this cannot be the input data because this is static data and what I need is that when I change the slider then this data set should change in a way that it only picks up those data points which lie in that range. So to do that we would have to use the slider and let me show you first how a slider works. If you go to the developer tab, if you do not have a developer tab simply right click on any of these ribbon tabs, go to customize the ribbon and you can check this option developer and when you will click OK you would have the developer tab available. Now if you go to this tab and you go to insert you would see that there are a lot of controls here. In this video I will talk about form controls and here you have many things you have a combo box you have a check box you have a radio button and you also have a slider here so I would use this scroll bar and let me show you how it looks so I would create a slider like this now if you click on this slider you can see that this moves but there has to be something that is happening along with it you have to link it to the data that is available here with us so to do that if you right click on it and you go to format control it opens the format control control tab and here you can specify a few things so in this case I would say the current value here is 1 as of now uh, the minimum value should be 1 the maximum value should be 5 and I'll show you why I am putting in 5 incremental change should be 1 and incremental changes when you click on this how many changes how much change should happen in the value and that it that is one and page change again I would keep it as one page change means that if you click anywhere else then you can have uh, then it will move by one only and it asks for a cell link and here is where we would establish a link so let me say the cell link here is cell A13 and now when I click OK you can see that there is a value in A13 now if I change this slider you can see that the value here gets incremented. If I move the slider, then it would get changed between the limits that we have set in, which is 1 to 5. And I'll show you why I have chosen 1 to 5. But let me park this here. Let me have this value here. And let me create my data set. Now, this data set is not dynamic. I would want a data set which is dynamic and which changes based on this value. So I would select this data and I would paste it here and I would delete these values all these values because these are static now I would have to create a formula that makes it dynamic and to do that I would use the index formula and I would say in index the array should be this entire data set I would hit F4 to lock this and the row number now the row number should be guided by this value if I have selected it as 1 Th this uh, row should give me the value for 2007 and these data points but if I make it 2 then it should give me the values for 2008 and all these data points so to make this dynamic I would first select this I would lock it and then I would add rows to it and I'll show you why I'm doing this I would say rows F4 is to F4 and I would lock the first F4 and I would subtract minus 1 from it now if you have a look at this, if I select this, if I select this entire thing and I hit F9, it gives me 1. 
but when I would go to the next row this would become f4 is to f5 so this would return 2 this would return 1 and this would be minus 1 so this thing would become 2 if I change this value to 2 here then this becomes 2 this is 1 this is minus 1 this becomes 2 and it picks up the data for 2008 so this is how it becomes dynamic and I'll show you how exactly how it works and in column number I would say 1 and now when I hit enter this gives me 2007 let me drag it down so I have this data for 2007 8 9 and 10 now if I move this slider by 1 it becomes 8, 9, 10 and 11. If I move it by 1 again it changes. So now you can see that my data has become dynamic and the reason is because of the formula that I have used. Now I can improve this formula. I have given the column number as 1. I can even change the column number and make it columns and I would, oops, I would use F4 is to F4 but I would lock the first F4 again when I hit enter now it gives me the same data but now I can copy this data to the right and as soon as I do this you can see that I have these numbers let me change the bold formatting here now you can see that in revenue I have this data set here but now if I change the slider this data set changes it becomes 2008 and I have this data set here now I would use this data this dynamic data to create my chart so let me select this data first go to insert and here I would select clustered column chart and as soon as I select this you can see that I have this data plotted in this chart as of now uh, the axis is wrong the horizontal category axis it should be 2007 8 9 10 so I would simply go and select switch row and column and now it is sorted now you can see that I have this data here and if I move the slider a bit so let me put the slider right below the chart now if I move the slider you can see that this data is changing these years are changing it becomes 2009 10 11 12 and so on you may think that these axis is changing again the vertical axis but you can simply fix it select this press control 1 and here change the maximum bound to the maximum value that is available in my case it is 247 which is the maximum revenue value so I would put it at 250 now when I hit on close you can see I have this chart available let me delete the grid lines now when I move uh, move this you can see that it is moving along with this slider so if I change this to 2009 as in change the slider this value becomes 3 and now my data here is appropriately picked up from this dynamic data set so it's not as much a charting trick as much uh, a formula trick now let me make some minor improvements to this chart the first thing that I want to do is I want to plot the net income bar as a line because for companies profit is usually the most important thing so I can simply do this by going to going to this option change series chart type and I would select line maybe this kind of line but the problem here is you can see that you can barely make out the difference so you may want to put it on secondary axis so I would put it on secondary axis and now you can see that I have these this line for net income and a user would be instantly able to identify the trend so it is increasing here it is increasing here but suddenly in this in this data range 2010 to 13 there was a slight dip in net profit so this is something that you can do again you can fix this because your it might change accordingly with the data so you may want to fix the upper bound and I would make it 30 which was already the case but I'm still fixing it so that it remains static so now you have this data ready I would want to change the chart title and I would also want to make it dynamic so in this case I would create something here in this cell I would say this value which is ABC technology corporation limited in millions and I would say ampersand a space ampersand and I would have to select these values so I would say 
the lower bound ampersand dash ampersand the upper value and now when I hit enter this gives me ABC Technology Corporation Limited in millions 2009 to 12 if you change the slider you can see that this value changes and I would make the chart title dynamic by just clicking on it going to the formula bar I would hit control uh, I would hit equal to key and I would select this cell and this makes my chart label dynamic in such a way that now when I change this the chart label would change as well so now I have replicated the chart that I've showed you here you can definitely hide all these values if you're planning to hide the values do make sure that you have selected this chart you've gone to design tab and here you go to select data dialog box and here in hidden and empty cells you have this option checked show data in hidden rows and columns if you do not check this option as soon as you hide your data everything would be gone because it will not be visible on your chart now you may want to also add a couple of things here so for example let me let me minimize this chart a bit let me first change this font we like here a bold thing let me put it down and so it gives me a bit of space to work on now you may want to also show what is the trend in revenue or operating cost EBITDA net profit in this year range which is selected so that you can simply do by using a simple formula this value divided by this value minus one and now when I hit enter this gives me a decimal value I would convert this into percentage so I hit control one to open the format cells dialog box and I would change this into percentage and if I track this for all these cells I have all these values which are the change in revenue or operating cost or EBITDA now if I change the slider here you can see that even these values change and now if I if you want to show some kind of uh, growth in revenue you can use this again this technique that we used with the chart title you have this small box here and you create something here you would say is equal to revenue and ampersand space ampersand this value if I use this data set you can see that it gives me revenue 0.318181 this is not what I want so I would have to use a different formula and I would have to use text formula here and I would say this is the value but the format here should be 0.0% .0%. and now when I close the bracket and hit enter this gives me what I want revenue is 31.8% but you may also want to show uh, an upward arrow or a downward arrow as we saw in one of the previous videos in that case simply go to insert symbols and here you can select these arrows whatever arrow you want to select let me use these for the moment and I would hit close and I can use and let me do one thing let me put it in a different cell here now I can also do one thing I can check for a condition here so I would say ampersand if this value which is this value is greater than zero then I would have this here F4 else I would have the sorry here I would have the upward arrow so I would use this arrow F4 comma downward arrow in the other case and now when I hit enter you can see I have this arrow here in case I make some changes so uh, here in this data it is always a growing data set but in case there is a change for example if this is 155 for example then you can see that it becomes a downward arrow let me control Z to go back and now you can simply use this data select this text box hit equal to and select this data here and now when I hit enter you can see that I have this value here so similarly you can have the value for revenue operating cost EBITDA and net profit and if you want to just copy this here let me if you just want to copy it here you can see that this has been replicated for all these and if now you want you can simply replicate this text box change the color so I would go to home and I would make this in color of operating cost and I would change this reference and I would make it 
operating cost this so it need to be a bit bigger because this value is higher or if you want you can because this is quite indicative that orange color would indicate operating cost you can simply leave the revenue part out and you can simply start your formula with text so now it will be easier for us to fit in our data in this set now this is the revenue figure this is the operating cost figure similarly you can create one for EBITDA and one for net profit let me quickly do it just to show you how it works I would go here I would change the color and I would link this to this cell and similarly I would change the color to maybe this color and change the reference to this cell now you can simply align these go to format align top align align distribute horizontally and maybe I can shift it in a way where it looks better now you have this entire data set let me get rid of grid lines you have this chart here and if you move you can see that your chart is changing your ears here are changing everything is changing along with the values here so you would instantly know that in this year in this data range 2009 to 12 the profit grew by 60% massive 60% it was a very good time but when you moved forward the change was not that good it was 29.4 in the uh, in the remaining years so this is how you can create a dynamic chart let me also show you one thing which is not there in the original chart which I intended to show you but it is a good to know feature again if I go to the developer tab you would see that there is something called as the checkbox here let me show you how checkbox work so I would click anywhere and it inserts this checkbox and here if I type say I type revenue I can make something where I would select revenue and revenue figure is available here but if I do not check revenue that figure is not available so what I can do is I can right click here go to format control and I would have to give a cell link and for every checkbox you would have to do that so let me give this cell as the cell link and I'll not show you for all these but I'm I just want to show you for one of the areas now if I go and check this it gives me true else it give me false now let me use a condition here I would go to this cell and I would copy this entire formula and I would say if I would use an if condition if this value and that's it you, this value because it either gives true or false and that is what if takes as the logical test the answer should be either true or false if this is true then give me this entire formula but if this is false then give me not available and that's it if I hit enter you can see that I have not available here and the value of revenue just goes away from here if I drag this down what happens the revenue figure is gone now if I copy and put it here somewhere maybe here and I say I want the revenue numbers as soon as you click on it the revenue bar appears but when you deselect it the bar goes away the reason being that not available is not plotted in a chart so when you have not available here the chart is not plotted but as soon as you click on it this cell becomes true and all these values appear again and you can see that it is here you may want to do a couple of more things here because when you do this when you uh, uncheck revenue you can see that this bar still exists it does not go away so you may want to manually put something here or you may want to have a cell and format it in such a way that if this is false then the cell should be colorless and nothing should happen but if it is true then the cell color becomes blue and the value appears here so you can make all those changes but this is something I wanted to show you a checkbox so this gives you a lot more flexibility it makes it a lot more dynamic so in case you have all these things you do not want the revenue numbers you uncheck it if you want the revenue numbers you keep it here so this is how you can create a dynamic chart you can see we have used so many different features we have used a scroll bar we have used a checkbox we have used how to make the chart title dynamic and we've also seen how to create this entire table using a formula and believe me it is not a charting trick I would say this is a formula trick because this formula does all the work here 
So this is how you can create a dynamic chart. Now let's see another example of using dynamic chart in Excel. Here I have some data set for these 20 companies and these four KPIs, which is revenue, OPEX margin, EBITDA margin, and net profit margin. Now I have created a scatter chart which can plot two of these KPIs at one time and I have given the user a flexibility to select what these KPIs are. So for example, I can ask the user to select from this list. If I say make him select net profit margin, then this chart would instantly update itself. Similarly, if he can change this, he can make it revenue or whatever choices he select if in case he makes it revenue, then this chart would automatically update and it would plot the data from this. And you can see that the chart title would change as well, net profit margin versus revenue. So this is how you can create a, a scatter chart. Now let me show you how to do this from scratch. So I would create a new tab. I would go to, I would first select this entire data set, go here and paste it increase the width as well. Now as I mentioned in the first part of the video then this data cannot be used. The data has to be somewhere where it is dynamic so that when a user selects or make a change then that data updates itself. This is an easier example as compared to the last one. All I have to do is I have to copy this data, paste it here along with the width and I would delete this because I want the user to input what data point he wants to pick up. He wants to put up, pick up revenue or OPEX margin or whatever. Again, let me go to the developer tab and here we would insert a combo box. So when I click on it and I put it somewhere in the worksheet, this is how it looks. And I would have to change some properties. I would go to format control and here I would have to give an input range. Now the input range would be these four values. So let me copy it and let me put it here let me transpose it. So I have these four values. This would be the input for this combo box. So the input range would be these four values, which would be visible in the drop down. And there has to be a cell link. And I would say A28 would be the cell link. Now when I click OK, and I go to the drop down, you can see that I have these values. When I select revenue, it gives me one because revenue is the first item in the list. OPEX margin is two, EBITDA margin is three, and similarly net profit margin is 4. I would again similarly create another one. I just pressed control D to copy it and I would keep the source intact. I would just change the cell link. It would be A29 now. Similarly if I make the change here you can see that it this value changes. Now I would create a formula. So I would use the index formula again and I would select this entire range. I would hit F4 to lock this and the row number would be nothing but a simple rows formula. The reason being that I, if I am extracting any data point, I would want the first value of this data set here, the second value here, the third value here. So I can simply use a row function, rows function and I would, I would fix the first reference which is, which is G1 so that when it goes down, it would become G2, G3, G4 and so on. And in column number, I would simply come down here and select A28 and I would hit F4 to lock this. Now when I hit enter, it gives me net profit margin because net profit margin is what I've selected first. If I change this to revenue, you can see that now this gives me revenue. If I double click on this, this gives me all these values, which are the values of revenue from this data point, data, uh, from this data set. Similarly, I would simply copy this formula for the next cell, which is this, and would change the reference from A28 to 29, which is this cell here, the second link cell. And now when I hit enter, this gives me OPEX margin. If I double click, I get this entire data set because OPEX margin is the second one that I've selected. If I change this to net profit margin, I would have these values. Now all I have to do is I have to create a scatter chart using this. So I would select this entire data set. I would go to insert and here in scatter chart I would use a simple XY scatter chart. In this case I've selected more than what is required. Let me just select these two columns and this is my scatter chart and it is ready. Now if I go to the right let me copy this here 
so that you can see side by side let me align this and let me also get the chart here so I have the chart here and let me align these three right now you can see that when I ch make a change if I make this EBITDA margin then this chart instantly updates itself with the new data set and I'm telling you that this is a very practical example I have used this chart many a times in my work and this is very very insightful because instantly you would see that there is a trend for example if I see revenue and net profit margin instantly I would know that most of the companies are not with high revenue and a net profit margin most of the companies lie here in this range which means that the profit margin is low for most of the companies and which instantly helps you in identifying companies or whatever you want to do with this but this is a very very good chart and I've used it in a lot of my uh, office work now now you may also want to make this chart title dynamic so again a very very simple way is to just say this value and percent quote versus double quote closes and percent this value and now when I hit enter this gives me revenue versus net profit margin I would simply go to the chart title click oh, equal to sign and give this cell reference and instantly I have this reference here I can change the formatting a bit so that it looks a little neat here now as soon as I make any change if I make this OPEX margin you can see that this changes along with the data the data changes as well one of the things that you must be noticing here is that the scale changes a lot whenever you make a selection this is because of the nature of this data here I have revenue which is uh, probably in millions and OPEX margin EBITDA margin and end profit margin which is in percentage but in case you have data set where these are all in percentage then you can fix this between 0 and 1 and 0 and 1 and then your axis would not move but this is a very very efficient way to plot a scatter chart if you have to identify clusters you can use this technique so this is it in this video I hope you found this useful thank you and have a nice day